What's going on folks? And if it's the first time you're joining me, welcome to the channel. Now I have totally fallen in love with Oxygen Not Included and today I want to share with you the top five mistakes that new players make. So if you want to really accelerate your progression instead of having to start your colony over and over again, this video is definitely for you. So let's start with number five, wasting clean water. I feel like everyone has run out of clean water at some point and it's very frustrating because water is extremely valuable. You need it to grow food, research tech, and for germ removal. So how are you wasting water, you ask? Well, there are three major ways. The most common way is with algae terrariums. It is absolutely not imperative to produce oxygen or to get rid of carbon dioxide in early game because you will have plenty of oxalate around giving you free oxygen and the carbon dioxide is heavy so you can just dig out below your living area to deal with that. But players assume that they need to get rid of that CO2 and so build these terrariums. Not only do they waste tons of water and your dupes have to deliver it to them, but it also takes two and a half terrariums to make enough oxygen for only one duplicate. Additionally, they will constantly produce oxygen. So even if you are at a beautiful light blue full oxygen, they will continue to waste water. Now the second way people waste a lot of water is with bathrooms. You do not need to have piped water and upgraded lavatories. In reality, lavatories work with sieved water just fine, and using fresh water is a complete waste. The only area of a bathroom that needs germ-free water is your sink or wash basin. I often wait until at least mid-game until I install plumbing so I am not wasting my fresh water. And the last way that people commonly waste water is by growing bristle blossoms. Yes, they are much nicer looking than mealwood, and they provide more calories, but they also use 20 kilograms of water per cycle, whereas mealwood only uses fertilizer. If you are growing blossoms in order to feed your duplicates, you are wasting massive quantities of clean water. On to number four, failing to insulate your base. A very common demise for a colony is excessive heat. This heat may be causing duplicate stress or equipment failure, but most of the time it is affecting your food production by causing your plants to stop growing. I have personally lost many colonies to this exact problem. And when it happens, we often wonder, where the f did all this heat come from? Well, if we take a look around the colony, you can see that outside of the starting zone, nearly all of the border tiles are significantly hotter. When we clear out the tiles up to them, we are allowing that heat to transfer, and it happens much faster than we realize. However, if we build insulated tiles before clearing to the hotter tiles, and these insulated tiles can be made from just sandstone, this will keep all outside heat at bay. So even though duplicates will generate their own heat over time, as long as you keep the initial low temperatures within your insulated walls, your base will heat much slower. This will give you more time and more cycles to find and install a few weaselworts for cooling or to use your preferred method. Which brings us to number three, under-prioritizing decor. So for the first few dozen cycles, when your dupes are clearing area and building beginner rooms, beds, and whatnot, stress will be a very low or non-issue. However, once you get a job board and the dupes are becoming specialized, they will gain stress much faster. That is where decor comes in. Every room or area that you build within your main base should have extra room for decor. At the very least, a row of paintings. In fact, this should be one of the first things you get done as soon as your basic rooms are completed. Decor is essential for more reasons though. When your dupes can handle more stresses, you will be able to give them upgraded jobs which greatly enhance their respective work speed and they will also be able to handle worse working conditions, such as low oxygen areas or hotter or colder areas. Also, they will be able to handle more status effects, such as wet or grimy. 
It is no secret that keeping stress low is important, but often players wait until it is a problem. Don't wait. Get paintings and sculptures made early game before the stress of higher level jobs and conditions become a problem. Now, number two has a similar reasoning to decor, but it is ultimately different, and that is expanding the base before infrastructures are in place. Now, you may ask, what does that even mean? Well, infrastructure is defined as the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities needed for the operation of a society or enterprise. So, in oxygen not included, what that means to us is that the specialized rooms such as a mess hall, farm, latrines, or barracks are already built. It also means having most, if not all, of the level 2 and 3 researches already completed. Your base should already be fully insulated with a few airlocks, as well as having your larger heat producing units like batteries outside of that cooled inner base area. Having your infrastructures completed before attempting to expand into slime areas or chlorine and hydrogen filled areas is essential because it will prevent many other common problems. Examples of these could be slime lung infections, overheating issues, oxygen or carbon dioxide issues, or food production issues. Indeed, most of these problems will never be an issue for you if you simply have already completed the infrastructures that prevent those issues. And that leaves us with the number one mistake new players make. Too many duplicates too quickly. Now, some of you may have already guessed this or already knew it, but I'm going to explain exactly why this is the biggest mistake you can make. First and foremost, your starting three duplicates can easily dig out and build most of a base. Will it take a few cycles longer than you may want? Yes, it will. But you must also keep in mind that each additional duplicate is going to eat more food, breathe more oxygen, and produce more carbon dioxide. Not only that, but the increased burden of each dupe means that you must grow more food, empty the toilets more often, and produce more oxygen. In other words, adding a duplicate does not always raise your efficiency. It can actually lower it. Another reason why you want to keep your duplicate count as low as possible is that oftentimes the duplicate printing pod will give you duplicates with suboptimal starting stats or bad traits like mouth breather. If you are just always making a dupe when one is available, you are bringing dupes into the colony that are not as efficient or don't carry as much or don't move as fast as the others. Instead, when a duplicate comes available, you should check it to see if it has any good stats, and if not, reject them all. If one does have a good set of stats that you like, you should keep it available until everything in your base is stabilized and ready to support a new duplicate. Alright folks, I hope this will be a major help to you, because I really really wish I had known these things when I started playing. But now, you can learn from my mistakes to help you get past early game and into mid game and end game. You will still need some trial and error, but by avoiding these five mistakes, you will see major improvement in your colonies and find yourself reaching much higher cycles. Also, please let me know in the comments what your best tip is, and if there is a certain subject you would like to see a video on, I would love to know. Make sure to leave me a like if you can, and I do plan on making more oxygen not included videos in the future. So if you want to throw me a subscribe to get notified of future videos, it would really help me out a lot. Until next time, Epics out.